Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested and welcome back to Projections where we're gonna kick off the year with a game, uh, Impressions. Uh, out this week is Walking Dead Saints and Sinners from Skydance Interactive. Now, there are two Walking Dead games for VR coming out. I know it's a little bit confusing. This is the one that's based on the comic book series, so kind of like Telltale's The Walking Dead and uh, is developed by the same people that did uh, Archangel and Archangel Hellfire, uh, Skydance Interactive in partnership with Skybound Entertainment, Robert Kirkman's company that makes the comic books. And it's a really interesting game because it's a full-fledged AAA VR game, $40 on all major platforms, even coming to uh, PSVR later this year, as well as the Oculus Quest. And it's about 15 to 18 hours or so. I'm about halfway through the game, but wanted to share with you my thoughts so far because I've gone through most of the systems and I'm really, really enjoying it. It's a single player game, so survival, horror game set in the Walking Dead universe, and it's part open world survival game, part adventure game, um, not quite an RPG, uh, but best probably best described as a survival uh, horror game. The way the game is structured, uh, you're in New Orleans uh, after the apocalypse, and while it's not com a complete open world environment, uh, the city is open-ended in the way that you explore the location. You have a base of operations. It's in a cemetery with a school bus. You've taken it over from a friend you've made. Uh, and that's where you sleep and progress through the day cycles, where you're there at night resupplying, uh, crafting, building up your supplies for then the next day you go out into New Orleans in one of nine other locations to then complete missions uh, and craft and loot and engage with not only the zombies, walkers of the world, but also the NPC factions that inhabit the world, the Tower and the Reclaimed. Um, and from that base of operations, you also have communications uh, with some other NPCs over a radio system and a message system. Uh, you meet them and they also offer you missions to tell you where to find specific loot drops or pick things up to then progress the story. The game is structured pretty non-linearly, so you pull open a notebook and you can kind of choose which of the quests you want to go on, and as you complete the main story quest, and as the days progress and the weeks progress into the game world, the world becomes more populated with zombies and the resources become more and more scarce. I really like this kind of ticking clock aspect of the game because not only uh, can you not just dilly-dally and your playthrough only lasts through those couple weeks until it basically becomes very difficult to play, but also even as you go on to these day quests into these locations, you're on a literal ticking clock uh, because as sundown comes and a bell tower rings, uh, the locations are then swarmed by the walkers and it's very, very difficult then to get back onto your boat skiff and make it back to home base. The locations themselves are a mix of residential areas, commercial areas, industrial areas, and they're not terribly big. They're about, you know, the size of three or four city blocks, but they're pretty densely uh, populated and detailed. You know, uh, you are looking in your map and seeing these houses, two-story houses that you could take 15 to 20 minutes to explore. You could walk into them uh, and maybe find an entrance on a second floor by climbing up and grappling up some drainage pipes, breaking through some boarded windows. And then when you're inside, you're literally opening every door, peeking around corners and looting and finding objects in the world that you then fill into your backpack over your shoulder. Older. Now that's a big part of the game as well. There's a lot of this looting and finding and crafting and I really, really enjoyed that aspect of the game. I'm looking for different components to then, you know, whether it's discarded uh, gun pieces, glue matches, or just random pieces of electronics equipment that then I take back to the home base, base camp, put in this recycling bin, and then create these recipes to then upgrade my weapons, my body attributes, uh, or uh, health, uh, and, and then and progress and improve in kind of like a RPG light system, uh, make your way uh, through the character progression. 
But it wouldn't be The Walking Dead, it wouldn't be survival horror without combat. And combat is kind of divided into two camps. There's combat with the zombies, the walkers themselves, um, and then there's also combat with the NPCs. And the combat with the zombies is interesting because it's not something you necessarily, and you don't want to actively seek. It's something that kind of falls onto you or that may be thrown onto you through some type of story element. So as you're making your way and sneaking around behind school buses and behind cars and into alleyways and to backyards, you're seeing the walkers in the distance and you may see, you may try to avoid them and walk around, which I tried to do, or if they spot you, you hear an audio cue and you know there's one or two walkers coming at you. And when there's one walker coming at you, it's really fun to prepare yourself, and this is a physics-based interaction uh, for melee combat, so you're grabbing them with one hand, and then you're stabbing them with a, a knife or a screwdriver into the head, because it is through the head in which you kill them, or you can push them back and throw heavy things at them uh, with that physics-based interaction. We, um, kind of not unlike Boneworks, uh, heavier objects have simulated weight, so you do have to grab them with two hands, and you there is a stamina system so that as you start engaging with these walkers and killing a bunch of them, you have to pace yourself and recover. You can't just run back up and kind of fend them off. You can get overwhelmed pretty easily. Uh, that's the melee system, which I prefer using, and or you can also use uh, a range of firearms. So there are pistols, there are two-handed weapons like shotguns, there's a bow and arrow, there are even kind of wolverine claws you can find in the world for, in terms of the melee. And so a lot of stuff that you can use to engage the walkers um, with, uh, but I always prefer the melee system. The guns, the firearm based system, it's almost like a last resort. They're very powerful, uh, but the simulated weight did make them feel a little bit sluggish and clunky for me. Definitely not as smooth as using a firearm in a game like Pavlov or even like Stormland where the guns have no weight and I can just focus and aim down the barrel. I also wish there was a setting to adjust the angle of those barrels uh, relative to the controllers. I was playing this on a Valve Index with the Index controller and the barrel was slightly offset um, and it's not something you can currently adjust in the settings menu. Speaking of two-handed weapons, there are a bunch of other two-handed interactions. I think developers are smart to think of two-handed interactions uh, as a way to test your dexterity as you're making your way through the game. Not only are there two-handed interactions to reload a pistol, for example, and pulling the ammo from this invisible ammo belt that you have in your front, but you're also uh, holstering weapons, you're pulling a uh, weapon over your shoulder, and then you're also putting items into your backpack over your shoulder or pulling the backpack and then pulling items and doing things like bandaging yourself. Now all of these actions are fairly straightforward and easy to do when you're not in the heat of battle, when you're just cowered in the corner and hiding from the NPCs or the walkers, but it's when things do heat up, when you're low on ammo. It's when a walker is slowly inching towards you and you do something like drop a bullet or misbandage yourself or not drink, uh, drink the soda that increase your stamina but decrease your health that uh, creates these tiny moments of panic that I felt like were the best parts of the game. Those are the most thrilling aspects. That feeling of paranoia that at any moment you could lose control of the situation um, and then you lose the game because there are no mid-game saves. The game only auto saves when you land in a new location uh, before you embark on a mission or when you go to sleep and start a new day cycle back at home base. It's pretty unforgiving uh, that way and actually glad for that because it forces you to play more cautiously and to actually feel the fear of losing all your progress and dying. You get one more chance if you die once to pick up your loot again, but if you die twice, that's it. You have to reload your save. I mentioned crafting and looting, and a lot of the game is finding those items in the world, bringing them back to base camp, and there are a bunch of things that you can create. I really like that part of the game of finding the scraps. Like never before I've been so happy to find a piece of wood in the wild because I needed the extra 10 pieces of wood scrap so that I could level up the new recipe and unlock that. And there are ways for the game for you to track recipes and track things that you need, and so there uh, reasons to go back and in, to other locations uh, that you've been to before and give it a little bit of replayability because every time you go, there'll be another random disbursement of these items. 
So the survival horror aspect of the game, I'm completely sold on, whether it's crawling through catacombs with a flashlight in one hand at the shake to keep alive while peering around corners or just cowering in a corner and, and waiting for the walkers to walk by. And interesting, as a side note, uh, crouching here is a button to crouch. You don't physically crouch, and that's something I hope that they patch to allow physical crouching, because something that could be benefited if you're playing this on the Quest, for example. Uh, but the other world-building aspect of the game is this storyline and the interaction with NPCs. Uh, it's in the name Sates and Sin. There is a whole gray area of good and right and wrong and good and evil in this world. So you approach these factions and there are moments that you can go down dialogue trees and you're pressing buttons and selecting between a few dialogue trees and it can mean the difference between engaging in a firefight or gaining favor or getting a new mission or betraying an, uh, your past mission and turning the tables around. You can send one of the factions against each other by giving them some information, for example. Um, and while that part of the game I found enjoyable, I also found a little bit frustrating because the NPCs were a little bit dull. The voice acting is pretty good, but the animations are stiff, and as they're wandering, as they're going on their patrol routes, you know, they're not that much more lively than the walkers themselves. And, you know, in a game, in a flat screen game, I may have been able to forgive some of that, but in a VR game, that stiffness and the clunkiness of the NPCs really stands out. Overall though, I've been really enjoying my time in The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I think it really uh, requires that you have a little bit of VR legs um, for all that free locomotion and getting around doing all that grappling, especially with the physics-based object interaction. That requires a little bit more experience in VR and it's not quite for the faint of heart. Uh, it is at times quite a scary game, although a lot of that fear is in your mind as you don't know what's around the corner. I think it's well worth it. Even even from what I've played for $40. And again, there is cross-buy on the Oculus platform for the Rift and for the upcoming Quest version. And I'd love to know what you think about The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners if you've been playing it in the comments below. Uh, we'll be back next time with more VR game coverage. It's gonna be a pretty exciting year for VR hardware and VR games. March is coming up pretty soon, uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.